100% pig ban. Haven't seen all too much of him. I actually expected more like this as we see from EG, but it's just getting slammed on like uh, R2. And so often we talk about Gangplank and his slew of builds over the years. We've seen Alfari go for like an off tank, weird, like odd build none of at that. times. None of that. Hopefully none of that. I want to see pure damage coming out from this Gangplank. I want to see him bursting people with his triple barrel combo. And we'll see if Impact can bring that to the fore in this game. Once again, though, Corporal will be diving down under with the Nautilus. They actually have a statue in uh, near the Great Barrier Reef of Nautilus. It was part of their push, a charity push a few years ago. I think I have a fun fact about it. Do you have a fun fact about it? I think I have a fun fact, but not about that specifically. Oh yeah, the world's largest reef ecosystem is the Great Barrier Reef. That's true. So Corporal paying homage perhaps to that reef with the Nautilus pick. Silas there though, you mentioned it, Goldboard locked in for Jojo in the mid lane. He'll be able to track this Twisted Fate and keep up with him in terms of ultimates. Yeah, we were speaking about redemption as well, coming through from Danny Zeshrill. If anyone is going to need redemption, it is Corporal on this Nautilus as well. They talked about it on the analyst desk and with good sense as well. Banning out the support's a great hit, although I do expect from the side of EG, they'll be blind picking their jungler here instead. Or it's not really blind picking, they know Viego's there. Um, and then potentially just save up their support for when you see the entirety of the composition, knowing what AD carry you are playing into. So, so far from EG's side, they just go with the strat. Well, we blind play Gangplank. Let's try and take away some of the champions that could be annoying in laning phase. Definitely makes sense. Biopan that has uh, more towards tanks in the top lane, looking more to survive the lane rather than dominate. And perhaps that's why we see the Gangplank, who scales very well as the game goes on, especially if he's left on his lonesome. Renata removed here by order, perhaps look towards another support band. There's the Leona taken away from Vulcan. Leona's actually quite interesting. I do like the Nautilus matchup into Leona. You can actually hook her out of her Zenith blade, so mm -hmm. usually something we'd like to see as well. From the side of EG, they're just gonna go for that support immediately. Now that can give you some leading room to actually play for carry down towards the bot side. I'm just gonna say it, Puma in LCO has been known for his vein too. And when I see a TF, I think to myself, you know what? You need to facilitate a lane. So either that's gonna be the top side knowing you can play a counter pick into the gangplank or it needs to watch the bad side where you know Vayne gets free scaling into Estrel. It's a great pick into the Nautilus, uh, the Alistar as well due to her true damage. So let's see what they round out the composition with. And there you oh. have it. Have I done my prep? Or have Man, I done that, my prep? That was actually pretty fog. Like, I'm. That is impressive, Gorbog. Thank you very much. Lots of kudos to you there. The vein locked in for order, as you say, one of Puma's signature picks in the LCO. And now they're looking towards their top lane. Will Biopanther once again be on a tank? Expectations are he will be on at least something pseudo tanky for this team with how squishy Nautilus can be. And with the vein down towards the bottom side, something like an Urgot that can survive the lane, that can still have lane pressure, makes a lot of sense. I wonder if Order has been scrimming Detonation Focus me because they're usually the only team to bring out this Urgot for Ebi Oppo towards that top side. This time around, it's going to be Biopanther. And I can't say I hated initially, um, just due to the fact that, you know, you have some damage in yourself, you can still be a frontliner. I think more specifically, when you have a vein, you need a straight up tank. But as you set yourself, Biopanther has done well. And maybe this is something that can give them the agency to snowball and give some more leeway for TF as well to have more lanes to play for. Because an issue, of course, for the, the vein is if this gangplank gets ahead, you are a short ranged AD carry into some barrels. And if those barrels are critting for a thousand damage, you're not in the best of shapes before the fight even begins. So having something that can harass a little bit on the top side of the map does make sense for order. We'll see where they want to use this twisted fate in the early game, because it does feel like they need to find some early game advantages before EG are fully able to take over a match. That's the thing, like, yes, they have late game in the vein, right? But if champions like they have on EG takes over, having to kite around in a gangplank ultimate, having to deal with a Jarvan and a Silent diving onto you, it's going to be really difficult because you can steal away the Urgot ultimate. You can steal away the Nautilus ultimate for that setup on the vein too. So the early game from the side of order, it needs to be clean. By the way, did you know that Tasmania has the cleanest air in the world? Well, hopefully they can copy Tasmania and be as clean as the air down there. I will say, Goldbook, I like the fun facts. Let's, let's try and be more subtle with our segues into them in the future, you know? Sure. I, I believe in you. I think you can do it, man. I think we, I think these are going to really so, educate and inform this early morning here in Europe. Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I, I definitely need to get better at shoving now that I have like 20 facts I think we can bring out towards the broadcast. I thought like 10 per game would be real nice to have. Yeah, just, you know, to around. give some love to OZ. I mean, it depends how long the game is as well, you know, because if it's like a 20 minute it, game, it, that's it, one every two minutes. As long as EG versus G2, we got loads of time. Medic. That is true. That is true. We are getting ready to get onto the rift. Order taking on evil geniuses, the LCO versus the LCS. 
in a battle to see if Order can pick up their first win of this group. EG making a beeline for the top lane, looking to get through these bushes. And they do have one sweep up. Biopanther will spot impact and immediately pings him out and backs away. EG might look for a late invade here. No ward down for Biopanther does mean that they have an avenue to approach this blue side jungle. And let's see what the response will be, because if Biopanther spots multiple members up here, the uh, other half of the map with Puma could have got in and gotten some early vision on spots of blue buff. Just get that jungle tracking going. Jungle tracking against Jarvan, it's so pivotal. He's one of these champions that needs to make the first two clears work, because if you don't find a pig, if you don't get a lane ahead, in the end, you just kind of become a bot who di dives in in teamfights only to die. It's why we see so many Jarvans go Sonya's Hourglass, just to stay longer for two more seconds but at times that doesn't even really matter and they still blow up afterwards. Yeah. So I think for Inspired, having to play for the lanes here is going to be pivotal. And you know, it's completely night and day from what we saw earlier where he was on the card, there was the team having to play around him. And that's great if you're EU, that's the way we usually saw it. But in North America, Inspired has been all about playing for the lanes and for Danny specifically, getting him ahead is key for EG quite often. That is the big shift that Inspired made from the way they go undefeated with the kind of style they play. We, there is so it's close the yesterday as well. We've seen the misfits, we've seen the vitalities, how close that was as well. It will happen. And honestly, I'd be down if it was ordered that made it. You know, I'd love to see them come through and fight a lot. I feel like we've seen the adaptations as well. This is probably the most order draft I've seen at the tournament so far. This is what was most reminiscent of what I saw at LCO. Sure. And I'm hoping that they will continue with what their own style is because Ose had a unique style. It's very skirmish heavy. It, it is kind of reminiscent of what we see from G2 as well, but they do it in their own way as well, where they're like, we don't always need lane prior to go in for a skirmish. If we have a CC on our kit like the TF, like the Nautilus, we can make it work. And that's the beauty of some of this gameplay as well. Just throwing yourself at them, hoping it works sometimes. It's the best thing you can do. Early on, we see trading in the mid lane. Jojo Pun, obviously, on the uh, melee into ranged matchups. Always going to get shoved in early doors. TF with the red card as well has pretty good wave push on the early levels. Kevy is going to be spotted on a ward as he's on his razor beaks. Jojo Pun looking for the engage. He gets us a kiss. A flash away from the order mid laner to escape. And that's such a dangerous matchup as well. It, it's why I was a little hesitant when I saw the TF immediately. I was like, you know, Silas is a champion. Mm -hmm. He does quite well into this matchup. Luckily, Wave isn't all too bad. If Jojo were able to retain a freeze in the mid lane, Kisei would have been in much more difficulties, but it is going to be slow pushing. He might not even have to waste the teleport coming through. So still calm laning phase, but he doesn't have a flash now. And he's against the Jarvan. Inspired will for sure look at this as an attack point. Inspired currently looking up towards the top side. Biopanther half HP. Ward goes down. Inspired waiting around the corner. Not spotted by that ward, but with Jojo Pyun missing it from the mid lane, Biopanther has to sack the wave. And he's ah. losing quite a lot. That's two waves with a cannon minion there as well. He is quite far behind. Apologies that the oh, overlay no. at the bottom. Oh, oh, the TP coming in. Biopanther does still have flash. Gets knocked up immediately. The chase is on. A little shield as he. Locks down one under tower. Yeah. Inspire tanks it well though, and evil geniuses take first. Blood. Excellent bait from EG there. You could tell Biopanther, he knew someone was around. He thought to himself, when my recall has channeled, surely JoJo's recall has channeled as well. But they decided to stay around. For that cost, they will be losing a little bit in the mid lane. But what's that? JoJo with a teleport, only losing two CS. And because Kisei got forced away, burnt his flash, then had to burn his teleport back into the lane, you know that he can't react exactly. to the tower dive, having no teleport of his own. Great stuff early on here by EG, 600 gold ahead, only four minutes in. And look at that CS difference in the top lane. Impact already has a sheep. Uh, it, it sucks as well for Biopanther. He's done so well so far in the tournament, but three members coming up here. Jungler on the opposite my, um, side of the map, full clearing, no one to help me. I mean, he's just left out to dry. There's not much you can do in that situation. Very difficult for the order top laner to react, and it is one of the issues when you aren't that tanky in the top lane. Vulcan here looking for something, but Danny able to force Corporal and Puma away from that bottom side. And is one of the strengths, obviously, of Ezreal is you're a little bit safer in that bottom lane. You can play at a little bit longer range. It gives Vulcan that time to roam around. You can see Danny hasn't used his biscuits yet because of how safe he is in that bottom side of the map. Jojo is so active on the map as well. Every time he gets priority, he just keeps moving down. This time around, it's a crash rave on the bottom side. Don't know if they can gank it as three, but now there's four. Let's see how it pans out. Flash from Vulcan, misses the knock of Ignite going down. Puma there, Jojo Pun's gonna get locked down for a second. He's on the chase, he wants a Puma heal still available. So it's Flash, the heal comes out and the Flash from Corporal will get him to safety. Kevy's on the chase. Kisei did start to roam from the mid lane, but not yet, level six. Kevy knows the Inspire's there, now Inspired with a Flash knock up.
and Order thought they were safe to come back, but EG were waiting in the wings. Uh, Order just stays around for too long. You could just have KSA in the mid lane, farm up plates, farm up waves a little bit, wait for that level 6 to come through, and that's when you start being proactive. A lot of these champions only spike when they hit their 6. You have Urgot, you have Vayne. It takes time for them to get active, and you need to be able to respond to the early game coming through from EG. But of course, EG knows this as well, and that's why they keep the aggression going. I wonder if they were trying to get this 8 to that level 6. He did shove in a wave, now is 6, but perhaps didn't have it in time to react to that bot lane play. No summoners, well, no heal on Puma now. Makes it very difficult for him to survive this lane. And even though we saw Vulcan miss the flash pulverize or the Q flash on the Alistair, we're still able to find the chase because of Jojo roaming once again. EG in commanding position, Corporal here. Perhaps didn't spot that ward. It isn't a little bit of a tricky situation. Sometimes just around the corner at that red buff oh, yeah. isn't spotted as you walk in normally. Kevy and Corp were spotted. The sweeper comes out late. Vulcan able to hex flash across the wall. And all EG here are doing is getting information about the fact that this Nautilus and Diego are roaming together. They're not looking for a play themselves. But as ordered, this is also where you have to get a little aggressive. You finally hit level 6 on the Twisted Fate. You need to kind of use what what you say, Kevy has been gaining right now, which is a little bit of a CS lead, which is a little bit of an XP lead as well. Yes, they're both level five, but Kevy will still hit level six first when he finally comes down to it. And if you can skirmish around that and start finding a few picks to get back, back into it, it'll be great. Problem for that is that if Jojo is always around Kisei now and he just steals the ultimate too, he can always follow up. And Jojo in the mid lane currently has the advantage in terms of itemization. Impact here walking in, looking for any awareness of where Kevy is. You can see Kise just hiding outside of vision. Often you see this on Twisted Fate. You don't actually have to move up the river. All you have to do is be away from EG's vision and then they, they have to respect the fact exactly. that that destiny can come out. It's how it works, right? It's, pro players won't always use Vort, it again. <laughs> Vort for Intel. They'll use the communication. So if it's like, oh, I saw him hover to the left side. You don't have vision, watch out. The other lane will, be, like, will have to respect that. And of course, this control ward gives vision on the fact that Corporal is pathing down towards that bottom lane, but also gives awareness that Kevy is not there right now. And Inspired knows where Kevy is, misses the EQ. Kissy coming forward as well, but the chase is on, and the Heartbreaker will stop Kevy's heart in his tracks. Jojo Pun, 3 and 0. Oh. And that's the issue. If you skirmish around Jojo Pun, that's where the issues can start coming through from the side of order. But inspired, look at how proactive he is. He just spots him with the sweeper, goes in immediately, follow up immediately from Jojo Pun as well. And he just speaks to the level of 2v2 that's currently fought, uh, coming through here from the EG mid jungle duo. Not something we would usually see, but definitely feels like it's leveling up in the tournament. I think Jojo has been a little quieter than perhaps some people expected coming onto the MSI stage. Hasn't had those pop off performances that perhaps we saw in the LCS, but this game shows just why there is so much hype around this guy. Yes, he is only beating Order. You know, Order is not T1, is not RNG, but it still shows when he gets his teeth into a game, when he gets his hands around his enemy's neck, he is very good at strangling Mount Match. 100%. And, and I feel like as well, just the personality around this guy, it's so clear why he's become a fan favorite for a lot of the NA fans too. And I know a lot of people has been a little triggered as well of the tweets coming through, but oh, honestly, I love the banter, I really like, I'd rather have what Jojo brings than just have someone who just sits back and isn't quiet. Because even if he can't deliver it, it's also motivation to be like, but I need to come back next year. I need to be stronger. This is the man's first international. Okay, he's just getting here. The same for Danny. And while EG right now, in the grand scheme of things, are not doing too well in the group, they need to end up. They need to get accustomed with the environment. And hopefully, this can be a stepping stone moving forward as well, trying to take down other teams like G2. Now we see EG setting up towards the top side of the map. Jojo and Vulcan here again. Two away. Death charge going to hit. Stolen away by Jojo. The chase is on. And Jojo just solos him out. Destiny coming in. Vulcan's hit for the chase as well. But the fear beyond death will pull. Jojo back into the gaping more Bio Panther, perhaps EG have overstayed. Heartbreak game by Kevy. Stolen away, but he can't get the reset. Inspired dives in with the Cataclysm. And it's another quick kill to order. EG a little too greedy, a little too deep. Puma on the chase. Goes in with a final hour. Danny able to jump away. Puma can't get a condemn angle. And so because Danny held the middle of that wave, the middle of that lane, there was no option for the condemn against the wall. Yeah, but as you said yourself, a little over aggressive from the side of EG and three kills going over to order there. Never something you want to complain about. We needed some stabilization to come through from them. Picking up those three kills there, definitely something you're looking for. But still, there is a goal discrepancy. But, albeit, not as large as it was before. Jojo just a little bit over eager on the chase, perhaps not respecting the destiny coming out from Kisei. Vulcan once again roaming around. And this is what we talked about in draft. The fact that Vulcan be, can be so active on the map and Danny 
Like, you can farm with Q. Yeah, you give up perhaps five minions here, at most, right? If you are totally zoned away from the wave, but you're in a CS lead, your support is everywhere on the map, is now level six, and the impact, no pun intended, that Vulcan and Inspired can have is demonstrated right on your screen right now. It's serendipitous how well it was set up as Kevy falls to Vulcan and Inspired in the jungle. The link up from EG in this game has been phenomenal, and they do it every time that Auto is going through with reset timings, right? Bowie Panther was back as well, teleported up towards the top side. Reset from Kese as well. There's literally no one who can help the jungle of Kevi once Jojo here and Inspired and Vulcan. They start linking up like we see in the jungle here. And this skirmishing so far in the early game has been absolutely phenomenal from EG. We set it out as a win condition. They need to do well in the early game. They need to make sure that there's no free scaling from Order, and so far, they've succeeded at that. Oh, Corporal spotted as he tries to get down towards the bottom lane, but I totally agree with you, Gorborg. Just evil geniuses finding every advantage they can on the map, and Danny, like, he knows he can just back away. He knows this wave's going under tower. There's no way for me to farm. I can back, go pick up my first item. He's in a very strong position. Uh, a we haven't really talked about that much that has, you know, developed quite a lead as well. His impact in the top lane on this gangplank, 20. Six CS up, Trinity Force already complete, and Biopanther really struggling to find any purchase on this matchup. Yeah, I, 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 Impact for me was a talking point I wanted to dive into once we reached like, reach the, around the 20 minute mark, specifically because yes, he's very far ahead currently, but it's still gonna be him alone on the top side for a good amount of time, and that's due to the fact that they keep playing around JoJo and the skirmishing we can have, but I'm gonna hold it for a second. Rift Hell has been started up here. You can see Puma making his way up in the minimap as well. This could become a five versus four with Danny in the bot side. Evil Geniuses should respect the fact they do not know where Puma is. Inspired, looking to perhaps see if he can reset, reset, it, guys. reset it. Flash hook pulls him out of the EQ combo. The root come downs as well as Kizzy has a gold card locked in. The rest of Order looking for that resetting Rift Hell, but the Rift Hell's on EG's side today. Auto can go back towards it. Inspired had to burn his flash. Auto should be able to get the Rift held in the end. Yeah, but the problem is that Danny currently in the bot side is just completely going off at that bot side currently still. It's just so close. I'm gonna Man, hold I it up. see the hairs there. on those minions' heads. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to pay attention to it, but there you have it. Three plays going over. And this has actually been something EG was very good at doing in the regular season. I'll get back to that as Puma. Maybe on the side of aggression here. And this is one of the weaknesses of moving your AD carry up. Vulcan diving in, flash away from Puma. Destiny coming in from Jojo, and he's underneath the tower. Vulcan tanking it for as long as possible, but they don't even need the tower to find the kill. Jojo dies, ghost out from Kiss. No! Stop! What? Well, stop, stop. And everyone look away. That didn't happen. Yeah. Stop the time. Um, but he did. Stop the time. Stop. Oh, uh, right. What did he want to press? He wanted to press the refillable, I guess. Yep, corrupting potion probably. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. Time warp tonic would give him a bit of extra movement speed if he is running that. Yeah. Um, and he probably so, yep. is seen he has on the seal spell book. Um, that was a bit of a blunder from the team down under, but they will still get the second Drake coming through here. So the Drake stacking is still going in their favor, but can't help but feeling like that should have been a way better skirmish. They still get a kill, as you say. Jojo still died. He went a little bit too deep. They could have found more of a chase. That tower is still standing. It meant that Danny and Vulcan didn't have the easiest of escape routes. Though it did still both have their flashes, so perhaps EG would have been able to escape without any further punishment. But, uh, Jojo just a little bit too deep. You've seen that a couple of times. It is one of the costs of the aggressive playstyle that sometimes you're a little bit too aggressive and you can be caught out like that. And now we can talk a little bit about impact. He's currently sitting at 6k, highest amount of gold on the map. Gold boots here. Destiny not available for kissing. Jungle camp stolen away. Inspired gets it. Red open pushing in as well. And as you say, yeah, impact in such a strong position. Cannon barrage very much available. Level 11 as well. And specifically, when you remember that, it was Bio Panther who's pick, who picked specifically this Urgot into the gangplank. Has not really been able to leverage on that pick, but Kevi now trying to get aggressive. Vulcan still around in the area, and just the threat of that support still being there makes order back off, and EG, they get all three jungle cams in the blue side. You see Bio Panther though, like, please, please stay up here. I don't want to be dived again. <laughs> I don't, don't want to yeah. be alone, please. You can't, you can't keep losing this amount of waves against a gangplank. This forces you so far away. And one thing that EG have done really well, if you could bring up the minimap for a Skullborg, is they leave vision behind when they look for these sorts of plays. As much as Order try and clear it out, you can see at the red buff there's two wards, there's a control ward, uh, sorry, the blue buff there's two wards, there's a control ward by where the red buff is. They have just this little bit more extra vision. And what it really does is allows them more leeway when they look for these cross-map plays, when they look to try and push in 
towards the Order Jungle because they have so much more awareness. See, pings immediately on Kisei as he roamed around from the mid lane. They now know he is in range for the Destiny and they can play accordingly. But it also sets up the conversation that is, well, it's due to the fact that Ichi kind of just has Pryo in every lane here in the early game. If Bio Panther was ahead on the Urgot and was the one pushing in the towers, Ichi wouldn't be able to have this amount of vision in the blue side jungle. And it's so annoying to see that they also are allowed to get themselves the same kind of vision on the bot side. It just makes the game incredibly difficult for Kevi to play because they have no way of responding. There's no way for them to attack in the early game. And they're just kind of forced to sit back and just take whatever EG throws at them. And that has now resulted in EG getting a 4K gold lead. And they can still continue with this. Bot lane has just been taken. Top lane sure to fall afterwards. You can rotate your bot lane into the mid game. You just move Jojo up to it. Well, it just falls before they move up there. And it speaks of how much of the map suddenly EG can take control over. And they can get this mid lane tower down as well. It really stops Twisted Fate from being able to have the impact he would like in the side lanes. You can track him a lot better. For the moment, EG in dominant form, in dominant position in this matchup. Now, Kevy, gonna look to see perhaps if he can get up towards that top side of the map. The EG group up as four people in the mid lane, way pushed in the bottom lane. Jojo Pun doesn't, Jojo Pun, sorry, doesn't have TP. I wonder if he's got the Destiny as his stolen ultimate. Because he wouldn't be able to join this immediately. Hook comes out, but the chase is on. Destiny comes in from Kisse. They look for one, but already Corporal is down. The chase is on. Inspired Force away. Cannon Barrage as well. Doing so much work. Kisse pops a stopwatch. Impact there. The barrel's not quite timed right. But EG still able to find one and back away. And that's actions of desperations coming through from Corporal there. Your bot laner was down in the bot side. Funnily enough, clearing up the vapes. Puma still doesn't have his mythic item. Fighting right here. Absolutely insane. Oh, condemn misses. And he yep, just gets yep. chained off by the Everfrost. Easy enough stop there. TP coming in though. Kisei still looking for this chase. Has that gold card locked in. Jojo Pun diving forward. Everfrost coming out as well. Destiny stolen away. Down towards the bottom side. Kevi chased out by Danny and his fire. And that should be an easy enough kill for EG. Gold card once again. Stopwatch popped by Jojo Pun. Trying to survive for as long as possible. The counter Destiny. Jojo Pun looking for the chase. Puma with a good condemn. But the chase is on down towards the bottom side. Kisei will be forced off. He's got nowhere to go. True Shot Barrage is true to its name, finds its mark, and two more kills over to Evil Genius. And just like that, the game has completely fallen apart from order. You lose all the control you had of the map. You can't even contest for your third Drake now, putting you on Soul Point instead. That'll be EG taking that over, and EG just completely running and rock on the map here. Even for the chases up here in the top side, where you would think Joe Pun was about to go down, they're still not able to get it in order, and the rest of EG, they just collapse and they get the kill. Everything on the map, complete control of EG. Every auto turret has fallen, and I really see no way for Mortar right now to find a, 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 a solid way back into the game. It'll have to come a mistake from EG. See here, Puma looking for that condemn, just doesn't line it up right. You need a lesson in geometry before you're allowed to play Vayne, apparently, alongside Velkos. And then the investment from Mortar, they're like, they're so desperate to find something that they just overfall. Yeah, that's the thing. Even towards the bot side or in the river of the map, Impact and Danny, they're the one, you know, finding the flank before the rest of order can actually come up here as well. And Jojo with the mobility just creates so much fate. So all of a sudden they get split apart. Even if they didn't, they probably still would have died. And it's just disaster for order. But for EG, a hope and momentum you definitely needed at the tournament. Being able to take such a reliant victory in the early game, something that they so far had struggled a little bit with, is a great side if you're an NA fan. Also gets them to a 2-0 head-to-head versus Order, meaning Order would have to reverse sweep them in the next two matchups to be able to make it out of that group. Puts EG in a very strong position in terms of qualifying to the Rumble stage. Something that I think most people expected from them coming into MSI. I think even after the first couple of days, it was still expected as Bio Panther looks for a kill here. A good block by Inspire. Bio Panther diving in. There's no one to save him, no one to help him. And Vulcan, with the Unbreakable Wheel, can tank four days. You're not getting through that cow in the end. Kevy is able to slice him up and get some roast beef for himself. Impact force to flash away. Kevy dies as well. And Kisei, the 1v4, has nowhere to go. Evil geniuses once again clean up the kills in the river. They are just so far ahead right now. They have the gold advantage. And despite that, incredibly close skirmish between Bio Panther and Impact. In the end, though, Inspired is there to block up the ultimate. There's just no way for Bio Panther to still continue. He flashes for it, despite that. But once again, desperation for order. And from the other side, EG, they can just continue taking away camps, taking away towers, taking away kills, taking away whatever there is to take them out. And it's a really well played mid game from EG as well. You saw it a couple of minutes ago, 4,000 gold lead. Now it's ballooned up to 8,000. They're not giving order any opportunity to get back into the game. Things like this, of course, the 1v1 can sometimes swing a little bit, but EG are there, ready to react. 
playing around the rift held, playing around those neutrals, and they force order into compromising situations. Even though to give some positivity for the side of order, there is that Bio Panda actually knows, and this is gonna sound weird, and um, but the Urgot combos, where sure. you auto attack cancel with press the attack, you get your W through, can wind in one auto attack, start the W again wide in one auto attack and it's a way to give like just a little bit more damage in the 1v1 setting that's why he does so much damage to the gangplank um, yeah unfortunately. It's, really, it's really helping him here isn't it <sighs> one two and two against the one zero five gang oh man those combos though <laughs> shut up he was a level down and okay i'm just saying it's something that a lot of people don't oh, know sure. about ergood yeah and i think, don't see him but, enough listen but, i'm just trying to give them a bit here okay medic i'm i'm, I'm really trying my hardest because eg they are in complete control of this Very game true. And I want to give Order some more. Um, seems like ED wants to give them a little bit more as well, although that's not very positive. Fire Panther, you can get out of your combo. He's comboing his recall button. Gulbog. Oh, he knows that one so well. Question mark pin comes out as they manage to take down Corporal. Oh my god, it's a recall. It's was a recall able to combo. escape. Oh, he right clicked and then pressed B. That's more advanced uh, I mean, than your gameplay, Medic. Very true, very true. And I will say, like, Order have had some. Shining lights across the last couple of days. Like this is not mocking order. This is mocking the game state right oh, now. Yeah, for sure, they are so far behind that there's really nothing they can do to get back into it, unless EG make mistakes. And right now, EG aren't looking like they're making too many mistakes. They're beyond death, not there in time because they forced away. Destiny came in. Cannibalize though forces him down to half HP. Uh, the thing is as well, even when EG is making mistake, the incredible gold lead is making up for it, and they still come out ahead. Oh, Bio Panther. <laughs> Yeah, that's a battle. That's what I like to see. <laughs> a pirate's life for me is impact. Battle well, combos not in much the of a battle. He was stuck in a cataclysm. It was more like waiting to die. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Right? It was uh, like shooting a uh, dismantled old warrior zombie in a uh, mountain cataclysm. Yes. Down towards the top side, Inmavita will be falling now. Baron buff still active. Five versus four situation, just playing on one lane. Should be able to pick this one up. Just come with resets and start playing on two lanes from the side of EG. Jojo been looking for Corporal here, Everboss just short. Mid lane tier two still stands, so EG can't just do that usual, you know, lane, uh, top lane into mid lane push for the inhibitors, but with Baron on their side for another two minutes and with a 10 kill lead and a 11,000 gold lead, I think they're in a pretty good spot to they close have, this one out. They have Rift Herald. We might even be seeing a dancing Shelly towards oh. this game here. EG commanding in their opening game against Order here on day three. And it's a good sight to see once again. I think this might be the most dominant game we've seen from the side of EG, even against the second round here with Order. Impact coming through. He's against three down here. I don't think he minds. He's level 15 on the gangplank. He's got three items. The thing is as well, Order don't know. Right? They don't know where the rest of EG are. They don't know if that TP was lined up with Inspired stepping into the bush. So they have to back away. They got a couple of control wards in, but Danny's going to clear that out. And now, once again, Vision entirely denied from Order. Shelly charges in. Tier 2 in the bottom lane, currently their target, the Evil Genius is probably not going to start stopping, stop, start stopping, not going to stop the march to glory with that Tier 2. Shelly charges in once again, the tower falls to a single E auto attack from Danny. Trushar Barrage goes over onto Kevin and EG continue to march towards a victory. Might push in here, no wave in the top lane means no super minion for them yet, it's about 10 seconds away. Nexus Tower chipped away at, but EG don't really have uh, the minions to back them up for this final push. I mean, it's a luxury for EG to do this right here. Normally, we just back, go mid lane, take care of that mid lane inhibitor. You have three super minions pushing in. They don't care. They know how far ahead they are. Now, supers are coming in on the top side. Normal minions on the bot side. They might just be looking for the end here. Hook's gonna connect, but only onto impact. Knocked up already. Corporal's down. Jojo on a killing spree as Puma locked up in the cataclysm. The chase continues. And so much damage coming out from impact on that backline. Evil geniuses kill them on the fountain. What was meant to bring life instead is only death for order. Evil geniuses in dominant fashion will pick up their second win of MSI. Finally coming through from EG and looking good. Yep. You gotta give it to them against order here. Cleaner and more precise gameplay in the early game. They had a win condition, they played towards it, they executed on it. And they won. Yep. It's just that simple for them. It looked like having, once again, Inspire to be the facilitator in the early game, having him to play around with, having the prior from Jojo Pune in the mid lane on this silence was a monstrous performance that allowed them to take over the entirety of the map. When it was Order who wanted to do that on the TF. Exactly. They just, Order really struggled to ever find any purchase on the game. And as you mentioned, Jojo Pune, like, 
That guy was a beast in the early game. His ability to roam, he was always there. Obviously, teamed up with Inspire, teamed up with Vulcan. That sort of triumvirate, that triple threat, was everywhere on the map. Jojo getting prior, being able to move around, really made Order's life so difficult. In Order, you looked at the destinies, there was one or two that found them a kill, but the rest of the time, it was just trying to react to the beat of EG's drum. Yeah, it just felt like it was a little disjointed order, you know, the jungle pathing was thrown towards the bot side, that left Fire Panther out to draw. When you finally started skirmishing, it wasn't in the enemy's jungle, because you didn't have the priority to allow that either. And even if you did, well, Jojo was on the Silas, always ready to hijack the TF ultimate, and then just take over the game as well. So I just felt like, from the beginning to the end, EG just completely dominant this game, and, you know, order never really got a footing in it. We have to see if Order can bounce back in game two. We're going to step away for a moment, but as we do, take a listen in on the comms from yesterday's match.